This is a movie maker project all about soccer, brought to you by Noriana Ravon. The technology of a soccer ball. Part 1. Components. Soccer ball has four main components, the bladder, the lining, the cover, and the stitching. The bladder is the innermost layer of the ball. It is the part that holds the air. They are usually made of latex or butyl. Linings have multiple layers between the bladder and the cover, since material thickness plays a vital part in the quality of the ball. They are usually made out of polyester. The lining helps the ball maintain its shape and bounce. The outermost layer, the cover, is made out of synthetic leather to repel water. The cover contains usually 32 panels to make the ball more spherical. Finally, the stitching holds the plant panels together. Hand-stitched balls are used most commonly, yet balls which have panels thermally molded together are found to have more precision when kicked. The components of the balls are key to the aerodynamics of a soccer ball. Now it's time to talk about part two, the aerodynamics. Have you ever wondered how curving a ball like this is possible? Well, it takes a lot of skill and practice, but once you understand the physics of it, you will be steps closer to mastering the technique. Look at number seven, taking this free kick. You look at this picture and say, where is this player trying to kick? Isn't the ball going to go out of bounds? If the player kicks it right, the answer is no. She's trying to bend or curve the ball towards the goal, upper 90. Look at David Beckham bending the ball. Notice how he strikes the ball from under, putting a spin on it, as shown in the left arrow. The ball moves in a counterclockwise direction, spinning and therefore curving, as shown in the right arrow. The bend is a soccer term for the curve of the ball as it travels through the air on a free kick. Like the curved ball thrown by a baseball pitcher, or a volleyball when served, the spinning soccer ball when kicked tends to deflect the air moving past it, and the air responds by deflecting the ball on its path. The physical principle is called the Magnus Force. When the ball is spinning after being kicked, the air through which the ball travels tends to follow a longer path around one side of the ball than the other, as the air is dragged along by the tur turning surface of the ball. The air following this longer path will bend more sharply, which results in a significant drop in air pressure on that side of the ball. The ball will then be pushed to its low pressure side, causing deflection. You can bet a big part of soccer comes from the technology of cleats. These are the parts of a standard soccer cleat. Insoles are just the well inside sole. The studs or what are sometimes called spikes and have different lengths and shapes depending on the ground surface and the player's preference. Metal studs, usually seen in football, are legal in soccer because they are a safety issue. The plates are usually hard plastic that are attached to the outsole and holds the studs. The laces are to keep the cleat from moving around on your feet. Soccer cleats are especially made for soccer. Although they may look similar, you cannot play soccer with football or softball slash baseball cleats because you cannot kick right. They are not shaped to kick a ball properly because they are high tops and have a steep slope from the top of the cleat to the tip. With that, it is almost impossible to strike a ball under it to make it lift in the air. Weight plays a significant importance in the performance of a soccer cleat. The lighter cleats are, the faster you will run because there is less weight being put on your feet. A standard soccer cleat weighs about 10 ounces. This cleat shown above, the Adidas ID Zero, weighs only 5.8 ounces. The secret to the ultralight design? Sprint skin, a single layer synthetic that is literally as thin as a few sheets of paper. To give the cleat some structure, Adidas uses the TPU support bands inside the sprint frame, which is like an alternative to plastic. 